Hi friends, the Flinch Squad has some brand new merch out at the moment. Go over to our new Teespring store, the link down in the description. There is a promo code of 10% of all orders up until Friday the 27th of midnight. So grab your merch and rep the squad at events now. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to continue on today with this dual primal team that we've been playing over the last couple of weeks on the channel. We made some changes on Monday with the Sableye and the Bronzong, um, and things have been going really well since those changes were introduced at the start of this week. As always, the team is down in the description below. There is a roll paste and a poker paste, and uh, without further ado... Let's get into today's battles and hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent. As always, if you do enjoy this sort of content though, do remember to drop a like on the video, do subscribe to the channel and let me know down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this team and what team archetypes you would like to see featured next on the channel going into next week. Obviously, we will be playing a brand new team, so if you've got any suggestions you would like to see played, any combinations, certain Pokemon, do let me know down below and uh, I will make sure to try and feature as many of them as possible. And uh, also, I hope you're enjoying the content being back on the channel, the more competitive side of content. Obviously, we are in the run-up to Sword and Shield right now, but until Sword and Shield does drop, we will be playing the Ultra Series because it is what we're playing in the official tournaments now and hopefully this content is helping you out um, obviously if you're new into the ultra series you didn't play in the back end of last season you're just getting into it this season there's a bunch of guides on the channel as well so make sure to check those out they will be helpful for you and uh, they'll explain the primal pokemon calls archetypes that you can put those pokemon with and just give you an overall view of uh, getting started in this format alongside these videos which i hope and if you've got friends that are starting as well direct them over to the channel because the more the merrier obviously and hopefully they will get some benefit from the channel as well it does look like it's taken a little bit longer to uh, find our first opponent of the episode than i would have liked so we'll cut it here save you guys some time we'll come back when we do find that first opponent We've got our first opponent of the episode. We've got Angel from the United States, and we'll get straight into team preview. Looks like they've got a spicy team to kick us off with today. So it is going to consist of Groudon, Zekrom, uh, Metagross, Tapu Lele, Mandibuzz, and Gastrodon. Really nice composition here of some odd Pokemon that we don't see too commonly used, but uh, going together and, and making a lot of sense when put together, I think, for what this team would maybe struggle with in the format. So we've got the Zekrom and the Groudon is the, the combination there. Um, not something you see so commonly. Uh, there's not really any trick room on the team. Uh, you've got Tailwind from the Mandibuzz. It's likely got the Psychic Seed, if anything. Maybe you're going to have Mega Metacross there. And then the Gastrodon going to be something that my opponent can use uh, to help them out with trick room. This is going to be a very tricky game for us, indeed. I think we're going to have to utilize Groudon, but maybe not in a... Hmm... I don't know. Hmm. If we can get Trick Room set up, we can maybe, maybe kind of spam Hypnosis here. It would probably help us. I think Bronzong is going to be good nonetheless. Um, oh man, this is this isn't this is not the easiest. This is not the easiest at all because Sableye we can't really make as best use of uh, the Faker as we would want to. Um, Maybe Salamence here for its Intimidate support quite good along with Bronzong. So I'll lock him with that. Benching Sableye. Maybe it would have been a good idea to bring Coco in this match as well. The only thing that kind of puts me off uh, bringing it is that Zekrom will be boosting that, which is already super powerful. Uh, we don't really want to be giving it any more firepower, even though it would be overwriting the Psychic Train, which might be quite useful, but... Zekrom Tapulele coming out for my opponent. So the, the Intimidate, especially if this is a physical Zekrom, going to be quite quite useful, especially turn one. Um, I mean, one of the things we could potentially do here is just Trick Room switch, hard switch into Groudon. I don't see really how my opponent would get around it other than Taunt Tapulele. Um... Which it, 
I don't know if it is, to be honest, because I feel like with Mandibus, you don't really need the taunt on Lele as much, so I would I would have assumed that it would have been scarfed. It helps protect Zekrom a lot more. We'll go for the Trick Room, and we'll bring in Groudon. The only problem, I guess, here we could see is maybe a Draco Meteor into the Salamence slot from the Zekrom. Zekrom could be scarfed as well, you never know. But we'll get Groudon in. If we can get... Uh, Trick rooms that appear, uh, then Groudon's gonna have a real nice and easy time because the next turn, if we don't see any switches now for my opponent, we can gravity and then we've got the hypnosis to spam the following turn if their Groudon does hit the field. Nature's Madness coming out from the Tapu Lele, gonna be into our Bronzong. Um, you've got to imagine that, yeah, we're gonna see a fusion bolt. Is it gonna be enough into the Bronzong to take it down? No. Not enough, and it is life orb. So we did get the trick room up. Um, okay, that's good for us. That is good, very good for us. Um, now I'm gonna get this gravity up because I feel like it is gonna be important. We've got a very slow ground on. Um, so getting the gravity up now might see some adjustments from my opponent. They may uh, switch out. Uh, or protect like they're gonna do with the Zekrom here. Uh, I wonder if we'll see Nature's Madness into our Groudon, which I am totally happy with if we see that because then the following turn uh, we, we've still got our bronze on and we're still looking pretty going into the following turn so uh, Precipice Blades coming out definitely not going to miss because of the gravity into the Lele and not quite enough to take it down but there's the Nature's Man it's going to be into Groudon here take us down to 50% health super fine with this super fine and um, what I'm going to do is go for hypnosis into that Zekrom and go for a precipice blade so just in case the Zekrom switches out here my opponent might be tempted to switch it into something that can better take uh, these precipice blades something like gastrodon if we can catch my opponent and switch that in uh, with the hypnosis then it, it gets so much easier for us doesn't it it is going to be the ground on now for my opponent um, as they bring it in it's going to be taking a precipice blades unfortunately we probably won't be able to take it down but then again the hypnosis is going to be really really strong for us to uh, just ensure that we're not taking any damage from it going into the following turn so there we go bronze on popping it to sleep and we should be able to get rid of this tapu lele now with his precipice blades coming out not really worried about a nature's madness thing you've got to think about is probably Gastrodon going to come in for my opponent. It's a good way for my opponent to tackle and deal with this trick room, but because Bronzong is slower than Gastrodon, we'll be able to put it to sleep before it is able to do anything, and I think a couple of Precipice Blades is still probably going to be more than enough to deal with it. And there it is. There you are, little cheeky Gastrodon. Unless it's got safety goggles. Well, no, it can't have safety goggles, because that wouldn't make any difference right now. Unless it's got a Lumberry. Or Chester Berry. Uh, but we'll go for that Hypnosis into Gastrodon. Um, we'll be able to get rid of the Groudon now. Put the Gastrodon to sleep. Uh, it does protect trying to stall out these turns of Trick Room and um, Gravity. Be able to remove this Groudon from the field though, which is going to be very useful for us. So, yeah, into the Protect on the Gastrodon. We've still got at least one turn of Trick Room. I think we've got a couple of turns, to be honest. I think we've got two turns of Trick Room left. But we'll double check as we go into this next turn. Zekrom going to hit the field once again. Not really too worried about Zekrom uh, protecting or anything right now. It's not really threatening. And I think a Precipice Blade is probably going to be more than enough to take it down. There's no threat of any priority here from my opponent's side of the field. Oh, you only got one turn. One turn left. So, uh, we'll try and get this Hypnosis and Precipice Blades onto the Gastrodon now. Zekrom going to protect out this last turn of Trick Room. I thought we had one more turn, but that's fine. Uh, we did get the Hypnosis. It does hit into the Gastrodon, putting it to sleep. Like I say, unless it's got a Lum or Chester, we should be all right does take that guaranteed turn of sleep now uh, and we will outspeed it the next turn it'll just be a case of wondering whether or not the Zekrom has something like earth power that could deal a considerable amount of damage to our Groudon which might it might do it could do definitely could do um now do we just go trick room and press his blades is it gonna have? Is it gonna have? Um, 
I don't know if it will have Earth Power. I don't think you do have Earth Power. You've got like you've got Presbus Blades, you've got Earth Power on the Gasseron. I don't think you have Earth Power on the Zekrom. I could be wrong. <laughs> it's got Earth Power. And it's life orbed. No! Oh, of course it does. But we get the Trick Room up again. I mean That's what we get. That's what you get for saying you've got you've got Earth Power. On Gastrodon, you've got Earth Power and Zekrom, you've got Presbus Blades everywhere. It's, it's all going on. Okay. Um, gravity turned to normal. I'm going to have to get Kyogre onto the field. Oh, this, is, this is difficult, isn't it, now? Because um, I don't know if we'll get, we'll get Zekrom with Kyogre. Um, do we go Blind Hypnosis into Zekrom? Hmm. I think we've got to get Kyogre onto the field now. It's not going to be. It's not ideal at all. I mean, one option we've got. It's a little bit risky because we're kind of relying on. Gastrodon to stay asleep, but we could go protect Kyogre, Gravity, and then the next turn. Hypnosis. I just don't think it's worth doing though. Um, okay. I think we double the Gastrodon, to be honest. I think we try and get rid of the Gastrodon. Let's go Ice Beam and Gyro Ball into it. Yeah. Zekrom going to protect anyway, so that's fine. Hopefully we don't proc a berry. That would be... No berry. Oh, it's got recover. Okay, that makes things a bit more difficult. Okay. Ice beam. She's gonna recover again, I think. Uh, we'll go for a hypnosis into the Zekrom, and I'll protect. I'll protect Kyogre. Ah. Uh. We can get the hypnosis off with Bronzong into this Ekrom. It makes things so much easier for us to deal with it. Ah, we shouldn't have risked. We shouldn't have risked that that Earth power, should we? We knew it could possibly have it. it makes so much sense. We get the blind hypnosis. Come on, Bronzong. <laughs> Such BS. But we'll take it. We'll take it all day. There's the ice beam. Okay, Salomon's not going to have the easiest time when it comes in. But Bronzong actually sticking around. Man, Bronzong is a beast. Bronzong is a beast. Doesn't even want to go down to that. So we will go for a Gyro Ball and an ice beam into the Zekrom. Hopefully the Zekrom doesn't wake up this turn. It has taken its guaranteed turn of sleep. So we just need it to sleep for one more turn, which it is this turn. So there, there, it's gone for that protect. So we'll be able to get a gyro ball. It's not going to do very much. Um, and then an ice beam into it, which Gastrodon just going to recover, which is fine. Um, I really don't mind the Gastrodon doing that. It just means that Bronze I'm going to stick around a little bit longer here. So ice beam, how much are we doing? Come on. And it's gone. Zekrom down. So that hypnosis wasn't massively necessary when you think like we could have just ice beamed it anywhere or in trick room and it would have went down so it's it's really not the worst uh, we'll go for a blind hypnosis into gastrodon why not and we'll go for an ice beam we can't use our water type attacks because of the storm drain ability on gastrodon it will just boost its special attack bronzong on fire it just it, bronzong just thinks that the, the gravity's still up it's like huh gravity gravity's still up right <laughs> So, yeah, we'll just completely shut my opponent out of this game with these hypnosis. And this is the other thing. It's like a real good fallback um, uh, to come back onto. Uh, we'll switch Bronzong. Oh, do we? I don't really want to switch Bronzong to Salamence. I'd rather just bring Salamence in at the end, really. And we'll just we'll go Jarrah Ball Ice Beam. Um, and there's a forfeit. Okay, so we get really lucky with the, the blind hypnosis. As you know, without them, I think it would have been a lot more difficult. But then again, um, like I say, the damage from the Ice Beam onto the Zekrom, I thought it might need two to take it down. But considering it only took one, I think we would have been all right, regardless, without that blind hypnosis anyway um, in the late game. So, a very good game to my opponent, though. 
and another nice one for us to kick off with today. So we'll go straight into our next one. Pick some music, I guess. Should we go? Trainer version 2. We never have this track, right? Never do. 1678. Dante from Italy. Have we played this guy before? I'm pretty sure we have. Might be playing a different team. I'm going to move my head and get into team. Okay, so Dante bringing a team of Tapulele, Rayquaza, Lunala, Incinero, Feromosa, and Amoongus. So, um, could be Trick Room, could be Tailwind. It's more likely it's going to be Tailwind from Lunala. There's very little on my opponent's team that really thrives under a Trick Room environment other than the Amoongus. Um, Sableye. Oh, well, well, you know, Bronzong's going to be good here, I think. Uh, we do need to be careful for the Lunala and the Incineroar. Um, I'm kind of tempted to go for the standard fall that we've been running so far. The Sableye, Bronzong, Groudon, Kyogre. There's a part of me that wants to bring Coco. But I don't think we need to... To really fear the Amoongus too much because we've got the taunt on the Sableye that can help out there. Yeah, we'll go for these four. Good luck, Dante. I'm hoping that we see the Feramosa. I'm intrigued with Feramosa in the Ultra series. It, uh, it is a very interesting Pokemon. Uh, I know Yorine was running it for a little while. We played his team on stream, I think, as well with the Feramosa, and it was interesting. I think it does some work. Um, it's not one of those Pokemon you see that, that commonly though. Amoongus and Lunala coming out for my opponent, uh, which is fine. We can definitely get a Trick Room up if we want to. We can definitely go for a Taunt into that Amoongus if we want to. Um, whether or not I want to take Amoongus Beam, I'll try and get the Trick Room up. I will. And I'm going to go for a... Do I Taunt the Amoongus or do we just fake it out here? Might just fake it out this turn. Just fake it out. Yeah. Z move. We're going to have to cut this, unfortunately, my friends. But we do have the Cassib Berry on uh, Bronzong, which means that uh, we can take this 100%. No crits, is what I'm saying. We'll be right back. It's actually into Sableye, which does surprise me. But we've got the Sash there, so it's all alright. It's all alright, so we're fine. Um, the Amoongus says flinch, we've got the Trick Room up. And we can go for that Taunt now into the Amoongus. Unless it's got Mental Herb then, we're in it. We should be fine. Um, I might even, I'm going to go for a Gravity now with Bronzong. And I'm going to go for that Taunt into the Amoongus. Uh, we should be able to stop uh, the Amoongus. Like I say, unless it's got Mental Herb. It hasn't, just got clear smog. It's gonna hit into our save lie. But that's fine. That opens the door for us to get ground on onto the field and start chucking out these precipice blades. Especially when we've got the gravity up and we can start putting things to sleep as well this next turn because the moon guys beam. Um let's see what the damage is gonna be like. Yeah. Bronzong should take this pretty pretty well. That's fine. I mean, we take that really comfortably. Uh, yeah, let's get Groudon in. Let's start doing some work. We need to start, like, ripping through my opponent now, really. Um, I'm going to put the Lunala to sleep, I think. And does my opponent have... They're bound to have Incineroar, right? I'm trying to remember their team. They don't have Incineroar, though. This could be a lot easier than what I think. Although, we've got to watch out for Wide Guard. What have they got? They do have Incineroar. So I mean, I'd imagine Incineroar to probably come in at some point. We'll go for the Hypnosis into the Lunala. I'm going to Sword Stance with Groudon because I don't feel like the Amoongus... Yeah, the Amoongus is staying. Tabu Lele coming out. Okay. That's fine. I mean, I don't mind this at all. Uh, Lunala protecting. Okay. The only problem is, I would say, is that it could be White God from this Lunala. Um, although it has got Protect. Protect, Moongus Beam. 
You haven't seen the other two. Could have wide guard. Could definitely have wide guard. I'll go for hypnosis. Do I go for the precipice blades? I'll go for it. I'll go for it. Because it's even if we see the wide guard, we still... I, I just won't. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. The damage is just too useful here. Um, the Lele is not really going to threaten a KO on either Pokemon that we've got. So, um, yeah, Precipice Blades. Let's just go for it. Let's start chucking the blades out. Oh, we've got the opportunity to. It does go for another Protect. Uh, we do. It does fail. So the Hypnosis is hitting there. We should take down the Lele with a plus two. Um, Precipice Blades. And uh, although the Shadow Shield's not bust on the, the Lunar, this should still do some decent damage. We really want the Trick Room to expire now, because the Amoongus is going to come back in. And this is a little bit of a problem for us. But not the worst. Hmm. Come on, Amoongus. We know you're coming in. It makes me have to really protect the ground on the next turn. Because I think if you're a Moongus as well, you have to spoil the ground on. You have to spoil the ground on. So it could give us the opportunity to Hypnosis the Amoongus, especially if we've got one turn of Trick Room left, which we do. Uh, so I'll go for the Hypnosis into the Amoongus. I'm going to have to protect ground on because the Amoongus is going to be slower than ground on. It's going to be able to put us to sleep, and I can't let our big hitter be put to sleep at this point in the match. Yeah, they're going into the ground on there. Makes a lot of sense. So we get the Amoongus. Um, and we might be able to get another Trick Room up now. Um, honestly. Because I think what I'll do this next turn is go for... <sighs> do I just Precipice Blades and Trick Room? I mean, I could do. Or I could just Precipice Blades, to be honest. Or I could Fire Punch the Amoongus. Like, what's, what's coming in from the back? The Rayquaza could come in so I do I'm gonna trick room and I'm gonna fire punch the Amoongus uh, the Lunala stays asleep okay so it works out perfectly for us we'll get rid of this Amoongus now unless it's sashed it is oh that's not so good with the trick room going up it does stay asleep though hmm if it wakes up the next turn that's not great for us <laughs> we've got to get rid of this Amoongus um, gravity return to normal as well. Ah, this is tricky now. Uh, we've got to just Jarrah Ball the Amoongus and uh, press this. Let's just press this blade. Let's hope the Amoongus doesn't wake up. Of course, it wakes up and it spores our ground. And it, it's exactly that. You know, if we protected it, it would stay asleep. It's always going to be the way, isn't it? Always. Um, we'll get rid of the Amoongus, which is not great timing, in all honesty, because now uh, Rayquaza is probably going to come onto the field and things get a lot trickier for us. We do spend a turn asleep. Lunala wakes up, Moongeist Beam, and this will take down Bronzong. But it does open the door for Kyogre to come in. Um, and we do have probably a fast water spout we can take advantage of. It's just if it is Rayquaza, it makes it difficult because we can't. Oh, we can't hit the ray, which is why Dragon Dragon Claw is such a good option on Groudon because it just removes that ray option whenever it does come up to the field. Okay, so here it is. Here's the ray. Do we just water spout to get rid of the Lunala though? I'll press with his blades and hope a Groudon wakes up. A nice beam. The ray. Hmm. Ah. Uh, it's getting so messy. We'll ice beam the ray. We'll go for a press of his blades and hope that gets the Lunala. I hope we get one turn wake up and, and can knock it out. Um, the Rayquaza might protect. It's maybe binded though as well, so it might not have access to it. Could be a Soul Vest as well many options we know that ray can run many variations of its uh whatever it's uh whatever its trainer decides so there's the ray mega evolving <coughs> this is why moongus is so good especially with that sash <sighs> kicking myself a little bit but not protecting groudon that's all we needed to do that's all we needed to do you know protecting okay that's not the worst 
Rhinon stays asleep. What's the ray doing? Is the ice beam. Like two ice beams should get ray. Hmm. Dragon Ascent. I'll be into Kyogre, I would imagine. Yeah. Okay, as long as we've got one turn of Trick Room left. Now that's this is where it gets messy because this is extreme speed range. Unless it is banded. Which that kind of feels like it potentially could be. I'm just gonna go for the ice beam. And I'm gonna go for the precipice blades again. Yeah. Groudon wakes up! Ah oh, we missed Lunala! But we'll get the ray. Okay, it is banded. <clears throat> so maybe a roll there, or maybe not as heavily invested as the one we played in our previous episode. Sideshot coming out into Olga, which is fine. Uh, we can probably fire punch for the win now, though. <clears throat> Plus two should be enough. I think that's the first Precipice Blades ground on is missed, so we can't really be too, too angry. Uh, we'll just fire punch, and that should be enough for the win. I'm going to see the Protect there. Delay in the inevitable, my friend. Unfortunately, um, the team trick room ending. The team going to be strong enough to kind of see this one out, so that's quite nice for us. Um, and the uh, Mingus beam take us down to about 40, 50 percent, 40 percent. I'm going to say 40 percent. I don't think it'll take us down to half health. I really don't. Ah, oh, critical hit. I was wrong. The crit screwed us uh, but that's fine very good game to my opponent good game to dante good game to my opponent uh, first game today uh, some nice games for us and we've got one more episode with this team before we finish up and start say goodbye to it before we come back with a new team next week so um thanks for tuning in my friends let me know down in the comment section below uh, about teams for next week ideas for next week anything like that um and just let me know about today's episode, what your thoughts are on it, what the team, how you've enjoyed it, anything you've enjoyed about it. Check the Flinch Squad stuff out because there is that promo code at the minute. There is 10% off anything that you buy over on our storefront at Teespring. Uh, the link is down in the description. The promo code is Flinch Squad and that will run from uh, up until Friday night this week. So make sure if you are going to get anything, grab it while that promo code is active so uh, we'll end it there thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you all for the next one so until then take care bye bye